Hey everybody, this is Michael Smiley coming at you with another review video. Um, I'm going to be talking about the chilling adventures of Sabrina, but the spoiler version. In my previous video, it was a non-spoiler video <coughs> for obvious, re obvious reasons. Um, because it had just came out, it had just released on Netflix, and I am very anti-spoiler a very anti-spoiler kind of person um, but I feel like um, people have had more than enough time to uh, catch the show watch the show um, so if you haven't seen the chilling adventures of Sabrina or the second season I suggest you stop watching the video now if you have Make sure that you uh, comment down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on it. Um, so here we go with the spoilers. Um, so season one left off with a pretty, pretty good shocker that um, the demon that had possessed uh, the teacher's body was Madam Satan, a.k.a. Lilith. Um, and that was an awesome reveal at the end and everything. So then we get into season two, and season two is so much better than season one. Um... Everything about it is better. The story, the acting, the special effects, the pacing, uh, everything that's going on in, in the second season is so much better than the first one, um, which is a good thing because it's always good to progress on a story and move forward. Um, so a couple... Uh, standout scenes there were a few in um, in season two so the one of the standout scenes to me well the first really big one uh, really was the church scene um, that involves Sabrina using the hellfire and the witch hunters um, speaking of witch hunters, oh, and her, uh, like, eyes glowing white and everything in it, and, res you know, resurrecting people, and including herself, because she was shot dead by arrows from the witch hunters. Um, speaking of the witch hunters, uh, that was really shocking to learn that the witch hunters were actually angels and divine. Um... So that was really crazy uh, that they uh, that they brought in angels and that they killed these witches. I mean, it's it was shocking, but it's not shocking. It was shocking because you think that they're ordinary human witch hunters. That you know, I believe in God and witches are evil kind of thing. Not that God had actually sent angels to wipe the the witches out. Um. But that whole scene in where Sabrina resurrected herself from the dead and and um, used Hellfire on the angels, uh, that was insane. That was the, the first wow moment of the season. Um... I mean, because the rest of it is good leading up into the, you know, up to that point, but, um, that really just, like, whoa, this season is not messing around, um, and the special effects are really awesome in that scene, <clears throat> and, uh, Prudence and the other girls, they knew who was Queen Bee now, um, and it really scared everybody, of course, because of her immense power and everything. So, <coughs> there had been, even in the first season, there's that scene in the woods that she keeps dreaming about or imagining 
where um, she keeps seeing two babies, like, out in the forest, covered by blankets and everything, and it's really weird because you keep thinking, oh my god, she has a twin somewhere, or, you know, a brother or a sister, and they kept her and got rid of the sibling kind of thing. So it was really weird how they played that out because they never explained it in the first season. And then in the second one, they start. that's literally how the second season started out was showing a scene of Sabrina either dreaming or imagining this sequence happening again. <sighs> Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. Um, but, anyway. So, it was really crazy because um, one baby had human legs and the other baby had goat legs. Um, and then uh, Sabrina's parents ended up handing... Uh, Lucifer, the devil, uh, the Dark Lord, which I'm whatever you want to call him, um, the baby with the goat legs. And so this has been a real mystery. Okay. A, a real mystery because they keep showing it and, and there's another baby with human legs. Um... And then, at the, at, it's like the second to the last episode, or the last episode, I forgot which one it was. But, so, throughout this time, um, as the second season progresses, uh, there's a prophecy. There's a prophecy that... Um, the Dark Lord wants Lilith to make Sabrina fulfill. And the first season was leading up to it, and the second season, everything's been leading up to this prophecy and the fulfillment of it. And so, of course, the outcome is... So Lilith's plan was all along to do everything that um, Satan had told her to do so she could rule with him by his side to be the queen of hell. She was already the mother of demons. She's already called Madam Satan anyway. So, I mean, she is the, she is the top dog of the demons, right? Well, it is revealed that... Lucifer, Satan, the Dark Lord, whatever you want to call him, he makes it clear that when Sabrina fulfills the prophecy, she will become his warrior preacher, whatever, on earth, and he wants her to become his queen consort of hell. So you're like, oh my god, what? And then uh, they show the backstory of Lilith and Lucifer, and, and when he fell from heaven and everything, and it was, it was really a really beautiful, um, like, artistic, uh, creative moment for the show that's not really shown in other movies and stuff. I mean, it just tells about it and stuff like that, but it didn't, didn't literally, like, none of them have literally shown the moments after it happened, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so you're like, oh my god. So, of course, you it's weird because Sabrina is like 16 or 17. And it is really weird because 
you're like, okay, well, from a power aspect, you'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But she is a little young. Um, I mean, but he he came from an age where, the, you know, that didn't matter. Um, because even in the 18th century and whatever, people are marrying at like 14. So, you know, it's not modern day beliefs and morals and all that stuff. So... So Lucifer wants Lilith to basically build up um, Sabrina and, and make sure that she fulfills her duties so she can become the queen consort of hell. And there's just so many crazy things that are so wacky and everything and so left field. And, um, and then... Right from left field, so she she obviously is not about getting married, okay? She already has a boyfriend. His name is Nick. Um, and Harvey is the other man in her life. She has no time for Lucifer. She's too young. She doesn't even... She's not to that point, obviously, of marriage with people that she does love, let alone somebody that is the embodiment of evil, you know, from her perspective. So, <clears throat> um, she literally has no time for Lucifer. Like, goodbye. Um, and obviously, he is the devil. So, he, he gets... He will fight for what he wants. Obviously, he had no problem creating a rebellion and going against God himself, so why wouldn't he fight for something that he's longed for, which is a companion to rule with him? Now, the biggest shocker is that so left field, and the shocking the shocking moment just smacks you right in the face that on top of everything that's going on she has to fulfill this prophecy and um then she will become the queen of hell lucifer is there it does show him in his uh goat self or whatever it is and then it shows him in his angelic form <clears throat> when he comes back and rules, you know, is going to try to rule in person. Um, the, the most blindsided part of all of this about her going to become the queen of hell, that's the devil's plan, is that the devil himself, going back to the scenes where the... Oh, sorry, guys. Where the parents give the baby with the goat legs to Lucifer. Lucifer reveals to Sabrina not that she has a sibling, but that she herself is Lucifer's daughter and not a true spellman. Did we get all that? So, this girl, who is half, half human and half witch, is not only several times more powerful than any of the witches combined, any and all of the witches combined, she's not only the chosen one to bring about the apocalypse and um, to become Lucifer's voice on earth and his messenger and his right-hand woman. And not only is she supposed to do that and destined to do that, but she is going to be 
the queen consort of hell who is going to be married to her father to rule hell and to rule the world while it's going through an apocalypse. Um, can anyone say crazy? That is insane stuff. That's insane. And that's just with, that's just with the first two seasons. This is just within, like, what, 19 episodes or something like that? Or 20, 19, 20? Yeah, 20 episodes. In 20 episodes, they covered, they've already gotten all the way there. <clears throat> so... So, of course, um, Sabrina, who is in complete state of shock, as she should be, <coughs> um, she comes back to her senses like, what? And she obviously is against, I mean, she was against everything that she knew to begin with, but she is against everything now. Um, it didn't just, oh, yeah, so now I'm his daughter, so yeah, that makes sense I get to rule over hell and ever. No, 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 no. Sabrina wants nothing of it. Um, she actually encouraged Lucifer several times, aka her dad. And, um, kept throwing it out there that Lilith who has literally done everything for Lucifer since literally the dawn of humanity to <coughs> become his queen consort. And if he would have done it that way, he would have had the woman who obeys him, Lilith, who has no problem uh, taking care of business, so it takes less off from him that he has to take care of. And to have his daughter not as queen consort because Lilith, Lilith should have been. But, um, and, and then to have your daughter rule underneath you on the human, on the surface and on earth to make sure everyone is in line and everyone is in check. Um, if he would have went about it that way, I, I don't think that Sabrina still would have agreed with it, but I think that it would have went over for his plans better, way better, than him trying to freakishly think that his daughter would want to be his queen consort. Um, so, yeah. Um, and obviously... That would change events here on Earth for Sabrina to be still living up here and making sure that the warlocks and witches were in check. <coughs> um, especially knowing that she is the, a princess. She is their, their uh, Dark Lord's daughter. Um, so yeah, there's so much that's going on. So... They do, like, they try several times to take down Lucifer, and none of it works. But in the finale, towards the end, they uh, come up with a plan to uh, entrap him. So he can't physically do anything against anyone or hurt anyone that anyone cares about. And, uh, so Sabrina and Lilith and everybody comes up with a plan. And it's very cool because it's a masquerade ball type thing. And I love masquerade anything in any movie or any show. Um, and it was so theatrical and everything. And, um, 
<clears throat> and they were the costumes were really awesome and everything and everything really stood out and the guy that plays for Lucifer is really um, a great actor too and so like Lilith showed the strength of her abilities and really uh, like Con uh, got control of Lucifer's physical state with her power just long enough for Sabrina to entrap him or maybe it was all of them at the same time all the witches and stuff that were left but anyway well it was definitely Lilith at one point no it was all of them they were doing a chant or whatever and, you know, Sabrina um, trapped Lucifer, or thought that she could trap Lucifer in her father's uh, device thing that he had made to trap demons and stuff. Obviously, it's Lucifer. So he's way too powerful to be kept in... A simple entrapment thing like the rest of his minions do. <laughs> so then Lilith had to take control of his body for as long as she could. Um, and uh, so they needed something that could entrap him that was powerful enough in a physical state that <clears throat> could actually hold his soul. And, um, Sabrina's, Sabrina's boyfriend does. And it's really sad because I really love his character. Um, but, so, then he, uh, he gets put underneath a sleeping spell or something, or he falls asleep. Anyway. And the crown that Sabrina had worn to show that she was going to accept the queen's position, she actually put it on Lilith's head, and um, Lilith became the queen of hell, um, which is foreshadowed in um, the episode where Lilith was doing the reading cards for people in a glamour spell type thing where they didn't know that it was her. But at the end of the episode, she pulled out her destiny card and it showed her, you know, empress of hell and it ended up happening. And she made everything right. She gave Sabrina her power back. It she resurrected the teacher that she had taken possession of um, because she was Sabrina's favorite teacher and she took um, Sabrina's boyfriend's body in her arms because that's what was holding Lucifer or is holding Lucifer's soul and took him to hell with her and she was wearing the crown and she was the empress of hell she closed the gates and now she's ruling over hell and, um, so everyone really got what they wanted besides Sabrina, who lost her boyfriend, lost her, well, she wasn't connected with her dad, but, you know, she still lost a dad anyway, another dad, because she lost her father and her mother in a plane crash. Um, so... Now the third season is going to be Sabrina and her friends going to get her boyfriend back. Um, I don't know what that means because Lucifer still has is inside of his body, his soul is. And Lilith is not just going to give Lucifer's soul up and let him leave hell like that, so... It's going to be really interesting to see, um, to see 
what happens next. Um, and uh, it's so exciting because they've done so much in such little time. It's just crazy. They really, and the show really does not care about uh, anything really. They, it's a ruthless show. It, it it does what it wants, and it's excellent. The storytelling is excellent. The creativity is excellent. Uh, everyone is so perfect in their roles. Um, my favorite character is still Hilda. Um, and it is so progressively crazy, like, it has progressed so, on a, such a rapid pace. It's so insane. And it, this show is so excellent, and it has its own style. It is so truly different than anything else out there. And, um, it, it, it's in its own left field, <laughs> because that's where all the, everything is coming from, um, in a twisted way. So, I really cannot wait to see what season three holds, because they just, they just, uh, really get right to it in the ten episodes that they have for each season. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, um, so if you really want to talk about this and everything, make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section, like this video, subscribe to my channel, um, I have more videos coming on the way, and um, yeah, I want to hear uh, what your thoughts and and what your hopes are for the future of the series. Um, there's a lot of ground to be covered. Uh, they're already renewed through season three and four, so we at least know that we're getting two more seasons. So there's just, there's just so much exciting things that I think they can really do with it because they can go any direction. And I think that it would be cool if they did show more of Hell. I would love to see Lucifer, or not Lucifer, we've already seen Lucifer, If we and we've already seen Lilith, obviously, but it would be awesome to see Lilith sitting on the throne of Hell, kind of like a tom cruise's leg legend kind of way if there was like an underground world and castle and stuff where it was dark and gloomy and there was little minions and gremlins everywhere and i think that it would be so cool if they did it that kind of way if um and i would be totally fine if they you know just um throw out homage to that movie because Legend is a great movie. Uh, it's a fantastic movie. And I don't say that about a, lo a lot of Tom Cruise stuff, but that was an excellent uh, movie. So, um, I think that Sabrina should take the same route, but with Lilith instead of Lucifer. Um, I mean, Lucifer's there. He's, you know, that's who she's, you know saving her boyfriend's soul for from whatever and um yeah we'll see what happens next possibilities are endless like i said but i think that would be cool if they actually did go down into hell and they um to get nick back and i i think that it'd be awesome to really explore the underworld have like a whole season of that um and of course they can always flash forward to the surface because obviously they have to have the other characters too because um prudence and um oh my god 
the cousin there. Um... Yep, can't think of his name right now. Anyway. I can't think of it. I, I don't know why. Uh, hold on just one second. <clears throat> Ambrose. Yes. Prudence and Ambrose are going after Father Blackwood. Um, I just had to, to look up Ambrose's name because it's not a common name that you can just think of off the top of your head. But Ambrose and Prudence go after Father Blackwood because Father Blackwood set up Ambrose and has tried so hard to take down the Spellman family. He's defied the Dark Lord and trying to make his own church and his own following and all that stuff. And he failed miserably. And it's not even the Church of Night or the Dark Lord anymore. Now, it, um, now they're thinking about changing it to the Church of Lilith. And that's so awesome. So there's just so much, there's so much potential and so many possibilities that they could go. It is truly insane, and I cannot wait. So let me know what you guys think about all of this. Um, and I think that uh, Zelda really needs to take command in the third season as the headmistress. There's never been a headmistress of the Church of Night, a.k.a. Lilith's new church. Um... <clears throat> So, I think that she should take charge. She should totally take command of that um, and, and advantage of that role and do it right because so far the warlocks have always been the high priest. There's never been a high priestess. So, now that there is one and obviously a whole reformation of the church literally into a whole different congregation kind of thing to the Church of Lilith. Um, so now it's going to be a total different atmosphere, so I really can't wait to see the progression and the, the total change that everything is going to be because there's just so much that has changed from the first season to the second season, and now even from the first part of this, the second season to the, the middle and then the end, like, and the doors that it just threw open at the end, like, there's so many, so many opportunities, so many possibilities, uh, and so many doors are open to go so many different routes, and I can't wait, I can't wait to see it, so, um, let me know what you think comment, like, subscribe, and until next time, guys, have a great night.